All right. Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to the C Show. I'm Chris, your host, and tonight I am here with Sue, who is an expert on the Jean Benet Ramsey case. How are you, Sue? Great. Great. Thank you for coming on. Um, I know this has been a topic that many people have been interested for many years, so um, let's just get right into it, Sue. Uh, who do you think killed Jean Benet? One or the other, or both of her parents, probably the father. And why would you think her father would do that? What was his motive? Yeah, yeah. Why? Why would he come home on Christmas night or even you know decide I'm going to kill John Bonet to conceal the fact that he was a pedophile? And why do you think he's a pedophile? His fibers link him to the sexual assault on his daughter. What fibers are those? His shirt fibers. And these shirt fibers are linked to his. You know, these shirt fibers were linked to a sexual assault to John Bonet. Yes. And well, okay. Now, when when was when when was these like they were on the body? They were. In her pubic area. Okay, and this was the clothes that he had on when he picked the body up? That he was wearing that night. Okay. The fibers would have transferred before he picked the body up. Are these the same clothes that he had on that morning? Yes. Well, no, I think he'd, he'd gotten undressed and gotten into bed. The, the homicide occurred the night before. Right. So you think that he took her downstairs, molested her with his clothes on, and went back upstairs, went to bed, and then put the clothes back on? No, he he killed her the night before. Up, okay. I think probably the assault happened upstairs. And then I think he took the body downstairs and went back upstairs and and got undressed pretending he'd gone to bed okay so then how did um well the layup out of the house so he assaulted her and burke didn't hear no or he might have i don't know and he's not going to come question hey why is my sister in here screaming well i mean he was nine years old but i mean still nine years old is going to go investigate something like that right well but he lives in a house that is chaotic and he's aware of ongoing abuse or has been a victim of it himself he's going to know to stay away what proof do you have that burke was involved in any kind of abuse no it, there's no evidence to suggest any such thing no evidence but we're throwing an accusation out there no okay um so, walk back to this. So, the assault happened upstairs, and he killed her on accident, on purpose? I think that he caused the head injury in an impulsive act, in a panic, and that he then, to keep her from waking up and telling anybody what happened, strangled her. But that was with Patsy's... Uh, uh, Garrett that was wrapped around her neck and right Patsy handled the cord is what I think is most likely and handed it to him so you think now Patsy's involved in killing her too yes so then Patsy's involved in the sexual assault as well I don't think so then she knowingly allowed it to go on possibly so, okay, so that, then that would make her an accomplice to her daughter being molested, right? Yes. Okay, so how long had this molestation been going on? Um, it can be traced back to most likely, I'm, I'm really not sure, but it, it, for some period of time because John Vinay had been exhibiting some odd behaviors and the autopsy results would show that it was it was ongoing. But there were and well, another doctor said there was no sexual assault. 
that pediatrician was a friend of the Ramsey's and didn't do an internal exam. And the doctor that you're saying, um, uh, excuse me, the doctor who said there was sexual assault, tell me his name again. Well, the medical examiner's name was John Meyer. Mm -hmm. And then she was, the body, or the slides in the autopsy report was given to a child abuse expert named John McCann. Yeah, and, and, and which one, uh, so I'll get the names right. Which one said there were, there was sexual assault was the friends of the Ramseys? That's the one that examined her? No, the ones who examined the, the autopsy, the, the medical examiner who did the autopsy and the, the child abuse expert he gave the report and the slides to. Okay. Um, so at what point did she go downstairs and eat pineapple? We don't know, but at, yes, at some point she took a piece of pineapple out of the bowl. No one noticed her doing it, otherwise they would have worked it into her their narrative about what happened that night. So they come home from the Christmas party. He takes her upstairs. She comes back downstairs, gets a piece of pineapple. And he, sexual, Patsy, he sexually assaults her, kills her. Then Patsy helps him cover it up. Takes the body downstairs and hide it. Yes. And then Patsy, Patsy writes the suicide, or the uh, excuse me, the ransom note in block letters. Right. So Patsy Ramsey is going to implicate herself in this murder that's been carried out by her husband and help cover it up. Right. Okay. So what evidence do we have? That so you you said that there were hairs found from the shirt on his pubic hair, right? Or on her pubic area, correct? Yeah. And that can't, that can't be transferred when he picked her up. No, it was in the the location that those fibers were in. Couldn't have been transferred any way other than than contact with specifically that area. Well, I'm, I'm uh, I mean I'm I'm trying to. Well, when you say her shirt, and I'm thinking of this little girl, how would his shirt be, how would there a sexual assault be taking place? I mean, the, it's not lining up here. I mean, trying to find out how his shirt's going to be on her, in her pubic area. This is a six-year-old girl. This is a grown man. Fibers from his shirt transferred there. That area had okay. been wiped down. The, what now? the type of penetration it was, was uh, not... Yeah. It but was, the doctors never said that. Her, but from what I'm, my understanding is, the um, that they said that there had never one doctor said there the hymen was still intact that, it, that she had never been penetrated that way. Well, it, it, that's not accurate. That's not accurate. No. Okay. So she. she so she, that it was not intact is. No, it, not entirely. Well, I'll say this, it wasn't without damage. Okay. Uh, okay, so she had been damaged there. Um, <clears throat> there's, um, there's nothing else that could have caused that? No, probably not. It would be highly unlikely. How unlikely for any type of injury to happen in that area? Um, a fall, a um, um, walking into cabinet. Um, walking into a cabinet? No. Um, I mean, um, <clears throat> I'm sure because there was a girl that I went to um, uh, college with that said she had been, and I never questioned this further, but said she had been injured by falling off a, uh, uh, excuse me, a counter and falling into a cabinet and said that happened to her and damaged her. I mean, because is that not possible? Something like that could happen? It, that kind of an injury could, could cause so, I mean, so do you think, was, but not like having, what, not like what was shown in the autopsy. Do you think, you think he was actually having sex with us, with her? No, no, not. I mean, I don't want to get too graphic, but. Well, no, no, I mean, that's just, I'll, I'll make sure this is, set to where age appropriate 
can only see this. Um, okay, so you don't you do not think he was actually having intercourse with her? I'll tell um, you what the I'll tell you what the medical examiner said. Okay. It was either digital or with a foreign object. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I've read that in um, um, one of the books on the case. Um, so back to the um, um, where was that before? So what time did they get home from the Christmas party that night? It, I think it's estimated at about midnight. Mm -hmm. And they, that was around the same time that I believe they said that she ate the pineapple too, if I recall, by what they said the stomach contents took place. Right. Um, and Patsy made the phone call around what time? Oh, gosh. Like, I think maybe really, really early in the morning, like 6 a.m. Mm -hmm. So this happened at 12. They... He killed her, and then they wait six hours and write a ransom note and call the police after yeah. they invited her. That's about right. So what were they doing during these six hours? Writing the ransom note and frantically like covering this all up or trying to. Well, what was there to cover up? Well, first of all, the body was taken down to the basement, and she was strangled, and... There was duct tape put over her mouth, and her hands were tied, and a paintbrush handle was wrapped in the in the cords. And then past okay, six called. hours. Yeah, I mean, you think about they're rushing around, they're frantic, they're trying to figure out what to do. And Patsy called five of her friends and had them come over to the house. Um, what, what you said, strangle? What, was the actual cause of death ruled as strangulation? Yeah. Because. I thought that the uh, they said that there was not enough uh, force put on the garret to strangle her. The, the cause of death was asphyxiation. Okay. All right. So from 12 to 6, they take the body downstairs, stage this intruder, murder, whatever, and then write a ransom note and just say, what do we do now? They're doing that for six hours? Yes. Or approximately. Or approximately. Um, and then they decide at six, okay, it's time to call the police? Yeah. Why not call the police at four? I don't know. They're just like, they're trying to probably figure out a way to get the body out of the house, but decide that's either going to be impossible or just give up. Well, but why would you take the body out of the house? Why wouldn't you? Yeah, well, I mean, why would you take the body out of the house? Well, they don't want to be linked to this. I mean, it's going to be more obvious that it was them if it's in the house. Um, what about... Um, <clears throat> The bad wetting theory. Well, yeah, we're what? You know, I've watched the the police tape. Maybe it was an accident. Something got out of hand. I mean, Patsy got mad and just killed the kid. Right. That does. There is evidence to suggest that there was something related to her having had a toileting accident that night, but it wouldn't explain the the evidence of sexual abuse. Um, but still, we've got two conflicting reports on the sexual abuse. No, we don't. We have two different doctors who've said two different things. Her pediatrician, who was a friend of the family, who did not do an internal exam, said that it didn't happen. So uh, you think that the, 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 the pediatrician said it didn't happen? Right, but he can't know because he didn't look. So the whole time that he went, that she went and he examined her, he never examined that area of hers? Is that no. what you're saying? Never? He didn't. Isn't that part of the pediatrician's job? On a prepubertal, a six-year-old? No, not unless there's a specific reason to. Wouldn't, I mean, I thought that was usually, um, uh, you know, my, 
standard things just to check to make sure the girl hasn't been damaged or nothing's going wrong. Yeah, I mean, they're not going to do an internal exam on a six-year-old unless they there's some. Inter okay, I got you. Internal. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All right. Uh, and and um, tell me again, who um, who did you say did the internal exam? It was done at the autopsy. The autopsy. Okay. I'm just. I'm sorry. I, I know you said that. I'm just trying to keep. I don't want to get my um, names confused on the people um, again. Okay. So the autopsy said that she had been sexually assaulted. Yes. And that she died from strangulation. Right. Okay. And does um, and he gave you a time. There was a time frame with the fruit, but. Here or there at this point. Uh, did the person who did the autopsy, did they have any idea how long this uh, molestation had been going on? There had been an incident at least three days prior to the homicide. It was, okay. Um, any evidence that it had happened before then? Yes. Okay. Um, who, from whose, whose word, whose testimony? Again, back to a uh, leading child abuse expert. Okay. Um, and John Ramsey had how many other daughters? Two. Uh, and how many times did he molest them? Well, we don't know. You don't think they would have came forward and said something about that, that their daughter got killed? No, I don't think they'd come forward and say anything about that. So if their sister got killed and it was from John Ramsey molesting them, you don't think they would come forward and say, hey, he molested me? Well, first of all, one of them was deceased. Uh, one child had been killed in a car accident before the homicide. And the other one is, no, probably not going to say anything. And she would just take that to just let him get away with it, right? Well, I mean, did you watch Leaving Neverland? Leaving Neverland. Um, I can't say that I have. Well, I mean, look, people don't talk about these things. Fair enough. Um, <clears throat> so there was no forced entry to the house, correct? No. There was a broken window pane, but it has been broken from the outside to the, from the outside, the window. That right? Yeah. It was not broken in. There was no footprints leading away to the house. No. Okay. Um, somebody had to be able to get in the house, and they had to be no other way around it. If in fact someone had broken in, yes. Yes, was it? Um, well, maybe somebody didn't break in. Maybe somebody had access to the house. Maybe somebody knew the layout of the house. Maybe somebody that she trusted enough to go downstairs with. Maybe that person who said, I'm going to pay you a special visit the night after Christmas. The Santa Claus was not, wouldn't have been able to do that. He had a heart condition and wouldn't have been able to carry her. His wife said, or his wife wrote a play in the 70s about a childhood beauty queen who was murdered with a garret and sexually assaulted. So oh, lots of people write that kind of play. That, it, lots of people write, that, write those kind of plays. You people <laughs> write about all sorts of gory stuff. Right, that's not a coincidence to you? And I'm going to pay you, Santa's going to pay you a special visit tonight after Christmas and his wife had written a play about that? Well, I mean, as for that he was going to pay her a special visit afterwards, she was getting a second Christmas because she was going to relatives' houses and in Michigan, and they were going to have another Christmas there. The night, uh, in, the night, of, the night of Christmas, Santa's going to pay you a special visit. And then how would, I mean, the, the, and then the play is written out like this, the exact same play. I mean, she wrote she, it during the 70s. Right. But, but what when would was it matter if she wrote it in the fifties or the nineties? It was still a play that she wrote. Her husband made that statement. He had access to the house. Actually, she, he didn't say that. Sean Benet told somebody that Santa was coming back. So then John Benet just made that up. 
Well, like I said, they were going to Michigan and we're going to have another Christmas. So that would be an explanation for why she would say Santa was coming back. Well, uh, okay. That was going to happen next. Chris Santa will come back. Hmm. Okay. Um, the ransom note. Patsy wrote it, right? Most likely. But it's there, but handwriting, handwriting forensics could not tie it to her. Well, they couldn't exclude her. They couldn't exclude her, but they couldn't say she was the one that wrote it either. No. But it was written on her paper, right? Right. And they asked for the exact amount of his Christmas bonus. Yes. Now, why would they go to this length to cover up this murder? And these people are worth millions, and they're going to ask for his Christmas bonus. Well, it needed to be my guess. This is a guess. A small enough amount so that they could have some explanation for why it was they were leaving the house, that they could get this out of the ATM. Uh $118,000 out of the ATM? Yeah. Where, where, which bank lets you get $118,000 out of the ATM? Well, I guess maybe they'd think that other people would think they could do that. This, uh, the, who was it? The Celebration Army, or what was their, uh, um, where, where, I forgot how they run What the letter Foreign said. Faction. Foreign, foreign You're faction. You're thinking of uh, Patty Hearst. Yes, <laughs> the, uh, yes, you're right. But I, I just remembered the the um, the foreign faction thing. Um, so I mean, they're, they're going to ask for that. Here, this man was worth what I think just look what I said seven million dollars. They're going to break into his house, kidnap his daughter, and ask for one hundred eighteen thousand. I can only speculate why she came up with that. My guess it was it's all it's just a guess to, so that he could leave the house. Because it would look like he thought he could get that out of the ATM. Down to the penny of his Christmas bonus. Well, I mean, she's not thinking rationally. She's just trying to do something, anything, to try to cover this all up. But she's incriminating herself more. She used the statement, John, use your good southern sense, or your good common sense um, along those lines, right? Well, she's not a criminal mastermind. But he is. Well, he got away with it. <clears throat> but there was touch DNA found in the panties that she had that was tied to none of them. Well, I, I mean, it could have come from anywhere. It, it, it was just trace amounts. Somebody had to handle the, the material to, to package it. What about the pubic hair that was found on her that was a match? That's, I don't know where you're getting that. You know, remember that part of the pubic hair? They couldn't match the closest one they had. The closest match they got was to the daughter in, in, that lived in Georgia. That wasn't on her body. That was in, in her bedroom. That was found in her bedroom? Yeah. Like laying on the sheet or? Yeah. And where, where did... Where did that come from? Uh, John Ramsey's daughter from a previous marriage. But I mean, how did it end up in her? And it wasn't. And it was only the closest match. It wasn't even an exact one, if I recall right. Well, it it was. It just it transferred because people are in the house. Their physical evidence is all over the house. The people who live there have their evidence all over the house. A while ago, you just said that that, that shirt transfer couldn't. Well, it was in her, you know, it's, the fibers don't accidentally just kind of transfer into specifically that area. Uh, you know, but I'm just, I, I don't understand how, um, uh, you know, the, the shirt fibers are going to get in that area. Um, anyway, well, I explained just, how they did. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. What? Well, Somebody did point. something to her that night. Um. Did this doctor testify for the grand jury? We don't know. Those records are sealed. 
Are they still sealed? Okay. I, I you know, I did. Um, I didn't know if they were still sealed or not. If if they were still sealed. Um, Alex Hunter was his. Is that was that the DA's name? Was it yeah. The, okay. Alex Hunter calls a grand jury and takes it for the grand jury. Presents his evidence. Grand jury hands down two indictments. He doesn't take it to trial. Uh -huh. He had never tried a case before, and he was intimidated by the Ramses, who had connections. In fact, a friend of Patsy's was friends with the Boulder Chief of Police. But he's the DA. Well, he didn't want to be humiliated losing. Well, I mean, but... I so he doesn't have that kind of confidence in himself that he could win that case? Why even no. bring it to the grand jury? I mean, if you're going to make it look like he was going to do something about this. But if you, why do you take it to a grand jury, you go all the way, and they indict, and you don't try the case? He didn't know the indictments were going to be unsealed. He thought no one was ever going to find out that the Ramses had been, in, that the grand jury had voted to indict them. And how long, and, but how many years did it take for it to come out? Oh, gosh. Uh, I, I'm not great with remembering specifically. It, uh, it was several years afterwards. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, I can't think of the detective's name off the top of my head right now. Uh, but he was the one that was hired, that brought in retired Denver police officer. He gave the whole, laid it out, the intruder theory. You know, by his story? I don't, you'd have to name, there are lots of detectives who worked on this case. Now, this was the one that was, um, you know, his, and his name's escaping me right now, too. He was the retired, um, he was a retired uh, detective from Denver, and the defense brought him in. Oh, and okay, he, yeah, Lou Smith? Yes, I think it's, yes. Not credible with you? Well, he was actually a criminal profiler. And, I mean, no, he, I don't think his conclusion was accurate. Uh, was it not also true that just a few months before there had been an intruder in Boulder? Same situation, little girl's bedroom? There had been an incident, or, uh, yes. And um, almost, I, I mean, Obviously, the little girl wasn't killed, but there had been a home intrusion, home invasion, right, in another little girl's room. Yes. Was that person ever found? I don't know. Um, has there ever been? Has there ever been any uh, intruders since then? Or no. <clears throat> so this one guy pops into this little girl's bedroom. A few months later, this happens to Jean Bonnet. Never happen and she ends up dead. Never happens again. This doesn't strike you as a coincidence that Well, you you brought up the pineapple before. The whole family adamantly denied that she ate that. When mm -hmm. clearly and very obviously she did. It it was proven inconclusively that she took that pineapple, but they won't say it. Why not? Yeah, why would you lie about taking the pineapple? Well, there really isn't any explanation other than that they're guilty. <laughs> but of all the things you're going to lie about, you're going to lie about her eating a pineapple? Yeah, because if she ate it, then they have to admit that she got up after they all went to bed and was downstairs at was home. Why couldn't she have? Well, it, I suppose it's possible that the intruder could have come in during that time frame, but then if they say that, oh, well, yeah, that could have happened, then it opens the door for all sorts of other questions to be asked of them. So let's go back to this uh, incident. Um, so we'll say, you know, 11 whatever time she ate it. I forget about that. So they get home and John just decides he's going to sexually assault her. Yeah. Just because it's Christmas. 
Well, I don't think it was because it was Christmas. Just because he wanted to... Now, where is Patsy while this is taking place? She was a cancer patient. I understand, but what does that have to do with her? I mean, I know she had to hear it. Well, we don't know what she heard. Well, we know that... Well, I don't know, but you're saying that you believe that Patsy was involved in help covering it up. So the layout of the house, I believe, if I recall right, uh, their bedroom was on the second floor and Sean Bonet and Burks was on the third. So she just can't hear that? Well, at some point she became involved. Um, in the sexual assault of the child? No, I doubt it. In the homicide or covering it up. Okay, but but she but that would also make her if she was just letting this take place. Uh, that would make her an accomplice of the sexual assault too, right? If in fact she knew about it and was allowing it, how would she not know about it? Well, mother, I mean, he's, mothers know everything. This is the man she sleeps with every night. He gets up and goes to bed and, and sexual assaults the girl, and nobody hears anything. Burke doesn't hear anything. Patsy doesn't hear anything. People go into denial. Again, she was a cancer patient, and she may have been afraid of him herself. What would she have to be afraid of him for? There was damage to the their doorway, and it looked like somebody had kicked the door in and you'll look for that I've read in domestic violence cases you look for specifically door damage and a former maid said that she was frightened of John that like he had a stare that could just kind of go right through you and that Patsy kind of acted intimidated by him I mean okay that's fair enough I mean um uh, <laughs> I mean I'm, I'm not laughing about that but I mean uh People have said that I have a, 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 a harsh stare. They can tell when I'm mad, I have a death stare. I can stare at the... That doesn't make you a murderer or a, a, a child rapist, though. Well, look at Chris Watts. No one thought he'd kill his kids. Uh, uh, okay, but we'll... Maybe we'll have a one about him another night. But let's stay on this one right here, too. But so in all these years that John um, had these two daughters from previous marriage, and then her. These are their only allegations of sexual abuse is by the pathologist who conducted the autopsy. Right. So based on his, what he said, your theory is John went in there, sexually assaulted her, killed her or hit her head, then finished it by choking her to death with a garret wrapped around her neck from Pat's that was the end was tied by Patsy's paintbrush. Took the body downstairs, hid it behind a dryer, wrote out the ransom note, waited until five thirty, six o'clock, called people over. John searches the house again. Oh my god, there's John Bonet grabs the body and picks her up and carries her, lays her out on the blanket or lays her out upstairs, right? The only detail about that I'd change is that I think she was probably strangled in the basement as opposed to upstairs. That's, a, that's, that's fair enough. Okay. <clears throat> Why write a ransom note then? Because... They wanted it to look like a foreign faction broke in and did this. But why would the foreign faction leave a ransom note if they've already killed her? My guess is that what they were planning to do is remove the body from the house and nope. needed this note as an explanation for why it was they were going to do that. Why well, they were leaving the house to go get the money. Why not remove the body from the house when they the crime happened, put it in a dumpster, then come back and write your ransom note, and then call the police freaking out, oh my God, my daughter's gone. 
Well, they could have done it that way. I mean, these are very, I mean, I mean, I, I would say um, very smart people. I mean, if you're going to go take a ransom note, take the time to make out a ransom note, um, that just makes you even look more guilty. I mean. Well, look, whatever they did or didn't do worked. They've never been prosecuted. Um, that's a good point. Whatever they did or didn't do didn't work. Now, let's go back to Alex Hunter. Um, what does he have to go on to charge these people? And what, what's his, what, what is he going to make his case on? Well, he, they were indicted on charges of accessory and placing John Denae in a dangerous situation. And he's it's kind of a like broad sweeping charge, though, isn't it? Yeah, what he did, because he did not want them to be indicted. He didn't want to take this to trial. So he put Lou Smith, the detective we were just talking about, who, who made the claim that the Ramseys were actually innocent on the witness stand which normally the prosecutor does not put a defense witness on the witness stand. So he went out of his way to try not to get indictments. And even with, with what he tried to do to try to keep the grand jury from indicting them, they voted to indict on, on lesser charges. But why even bring it to a grand jury? Because he had to make it look like he was doing something. People were getting frustrated that nothing was being done about this. Why didn't the Boulder police charge him? Well, the only body that can actually bring a charge is the district attorney's office. Um, why didn't the Boulder police arrest him? That I do not know. Apparently, they got the officers who were actually at the scene were given instructions from higher up to treat the Ramses with kid gloves. Why didn't and I don't know why. Just, and I'm sorry, what was that now? I don't know why. Why did not the state district attorney get involved? They were, again, intimidated by the Ramseys who had connections. I mean, but this is the attorney general of the state. The Ramseys, that kind of connections, I can override that. Well, nobody wanted to get involved in this. Nobody wanted to get involved in this because they're that intimidated of John Ramsey. Yeah, they had, I mean, think about O.J. Simpson. They had more money and more connections. O.J. Simpson. John, John, O.J. Simpson had everything. I mean. The Ramseys had more money than O.J. You know, I don't know how much um, O.J. was worth at the time or how much Ramseys was worth at the time, but if anybody had connections, it was Simpson. Um this guy was all over the place. I mean, everybody knew who OJ was. Nobody ever heard of John Ramsey except for his associates until after that night. John Ramsey's lawyer knew everyone who worked for the district attorney's office. Well, that's not uncommon at all. I mean, all these lawyers, judges, and DAs, they play golf together every Thursday. They all know each other. Well, it worked. They weren't prosecuted. Um. Okay. Now, here's something I always like to do when, my, in, when I interview somebody. You are the Ramsey's defense attorney, and they've been charged. Attack the evidence. Okay. I'm the Ramsey's defense attorney? The Ramsey's defense attorney. They've been put on trial. They are standing trial for murder of their daughter. They've been accused of sexually assaulting her and covering this up. You're the defense. Attack the evidence. Okay. Well, their defense attorney pointed fingers at the, like you pointed out, the Santa Claus and made a big deal about that there was some trace amounts of DNA yeah. on the okay. underpants. As you, as, as, is, is this how you would, is this how you would attack? Because I've got, uh, there's, Two of them on there. If you check them out one time. Um, I've got with uh, Bill Brown about the officer of uh, murder of Tippett in the JFK assassination, and then Clay Shaw, who was put on trial. So if you're the defense attorney and you're trying to make up reasonable doubt, attack the evidence. Who? I mean, is that what you're going after? You're going after the Bill McReynolds? I mean, how would you go about trying to bring up reasonable doubt that 
there's no way this couple right here is going to murder their daughter. Right. I would just point out that they were fine, upstanding citizens, supposedly, and they were church-going Christians, and Patsy was a former beauty queen, and that it's just absolutely impossible that these perfect people could have done this. And would you would you point your fang- the finger at Bill McReynolds? I, if I'm the defense attorney, I would. Is that the person you would go after the most? I I think p- possibly. Well, it might make me look bad. The guy had a heart condition and couldn't have carried her. Um. Yeah, but I mean, see, but defense attorneys, you know, they're um. They're a necessary evil. You know, you can't worry about how it's going to look. You know, you're hired to get your client off. So I would have went after him as hard as I could have if I'd have been the Ramsey's defense attorney. Um, so, you know, of all the um, people I've talked to about this case, you know, and I've, I've, um, haven't, um, I've been away from it for a while. Uh, uh, back, you know, 15 years ago, I was addicted to it. And, um, but, this is um you're probably the most interesting person with a theory that I've ever talked to on it. I've never heard anybody um accuse John of being the murderer. Um and Patsy Actually, covering it up. Yeah. To make the point oh. that huh? the first detective to arrive on the scene, the only detective who was present at the time the body was brought up from the basement. And she also witnessed the autopsy. She was an experienced sex crimes investigator, and she believed it was Don. The first person on the scene? The first detective? The first detective on the scene. Really? Um, you know, I, I, I don't remember that. Um, I, did, I did. A friend of mine asked me the other day when we was talking about the case, and I, I was telling he was asking my opinion on it, and and I, and I told him I said, um, if you have time, I said go get. And I don't I don't remember if it was even mentioned in there. I said, but go read the book Perfect Murder, Perfect Town. Um, and I said I think it does a good job of trying to. Um, I, I don't being unbiased. I mean, it didn't really try to convict the Ramses or or try to exonerate them either. Um, the way I remember the book being. Um, book being read but i do not I, I don't remember that detective you're talking about though but i'm glad you brought that up um because you know usually everything that i've ever heard uh people always accuse patsy of being the murderer and um john being the one covering it up um so that this has been um very a very interesting take that you've given me on this uh gonna have to maybe definitely go back and um re-examine re-examine my own thoughts on it whether if uh Don Ramsey could have actually been the murderer. Probably not great to get into so much time thinking about it. Um, well, it, 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 it'll give me something to um, re-examine, I guess, to go back in. Um, uh, and um, when, did, um, when did you start your group? Oh, like probably about a year and a half ago. Yeah, um, okay. Um, uh, I'm sorry, I lost your thing. Uh, do you want um, people to know where to find you on the group at, or you know, you're it welcome. Doesn't to... matter. Well, I mean, okay. Tell them the name of your group. Um, off, off the top of my head was. It's called Don Benet, victim of filicide. Okay. Uh, yes, uh, I would recommend anybody who's um, interested in the John Benet Ramsey case to check that out. Uh, I've read, um, haven't I've read all of them, but I've read a lot of her uh, posts on there. Um, there's some good information um, uh, that, um, anyway, it's, it's a good site. I've, I've joined several of them. Uh, yours has been the one that has offered um, uh, a lot of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Food for thought, I guess, instead of just, uh, you know, um, people just posting random stuff um so i really appreciate you coming on tonight um this has been a had a good time i hope i didn't uh went too rough on you <laughs> oh no that was a lot of fun well, i think okay. you would be a good like talk show host do what now i think you would be good for a, like a professional talk show host like, well, I think- yeah, that's 
Yeah, you could be like Anderson Cooper. Um, uh, yeah, that that would be pretty good. You know, like I said, when I started this, you know, it um, it um, has went up, and uh, hopefully they continue going up. Especially if I can get uh, continue to get um people like you on here who's knowledgeable and uh, knows a lot about this. Um, I I messed up a lot of the questions, but it was it was okay. No, you didn't really mess them up because uh, I was uh I. Um, when you said, um, uh, you know, it was okay to, to um, question you hard, I did. And I thought you held up pretty good because I thought I, I cross-examined you pretty good on that. But Yeah, like uh, there are people who've been following this case who would have like been right on with all of the times and dates, like much sharper than me. Uh, you did a great job, Ashley, you know, because, uh, you know, I should have, you know, I didn't even come on with them either. Um, but um, I'm going to um, make sure I uh, edit this and post it on your channel so everybody can see how well you did, Sue. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs>